the council's point of view, the council hasn't got any money to spend on the estate. Indeed, the council hasn't got much money to spend anyway, to be perfectly honest. <coughs> there, are certain, there are certain factors that have to go into an estate action bid for it to be successful. Now, whether you like these or not, they've got to go in. If you don't put them in, the government, in other words, the Department of the Environment, will just throw them out before they'll grant any money to, for the council to borrow. And I might add, it's not money from the government, it's permission to borrow your own money. That's really what we're talking about. Before they'll grant any permission for the council to borrow money, one of the, the rules that must satisfy is that a certain part of the, a certain number of council houses have to be sold off. It's called diversity, diversity of tenure, but it means selling off the council houses. Now, the way in which the council has achieved this in the past is by picking on housing associations working in the, in this, in the, uh, the borough, selling houses off to them, who in turn will relet them back to existing people who actually live in the borough. The difficulty is, obviously, there's a rent difference between the council stock and housing association stock. That's one of the problems we've got. The government fun, you know, funnels, uh, channels cash into housing these days by means of the housing corporation and into housing associations such as Chile Housing Association to build it. It doesn't want councils building council housing. You know, that, that's not a political statement, that's just a fact. their irises out. What you do is you let them die off and you throw the seeds, right? Yeah. So what did you see? They're throwing them in the side. We put so much work into it, not just into the garden, into the house itself. They told us that we could keep a property, that we could stay with council. Great, lovely. So I went and spent another £300 in the bathroom, then all of a sudden they tell me, I went to one meeting with the chief and the council and said the house is going to be demolished. I was so angry that I stormed out at the meeting. And I really was, I just stormed out. And I think they could have told me from the beginning what was going to happen, instead of, well, really, I think they just mucked me about. They should have said, look, we're going to sell the whole lot. They had done that, we would have known where we were, but they didn't. Yes, the estate does need doing up. It does, it needs shot blasting, the whole lot of it. But there's a lot of tenants that have put so much hard work into their houses and into their gardens, and it's just unbelievable that they just want to come by and just destroy everything that people have created. I'm not against Cheviot. Great, lovely. I mean, the estate needs doing. But, I mean, it would be like a great jump for me and Bill to go from one rent, say £28, such and such, up to about 40 to £50. Pound. I mean, it would be quite, quite a sum. And I think it's the biggest worry on this estate with people. It really is. Now, personally, I have reluctantly had to accept that there'll have to be some housing association houses as part of these plans. But I think there are far too many. Now, you shouldn't take these plans as tablets of stone. They're not. It says at the top there, action, bid, initial ideas. You can get your ideas included. You can get the amount of association housing reduced. You can get other plans included. The consultation exercise must not be a paper exercise. It must be real. Unless they consult, there's no money. So they've got a, a big sort of um, hammer holding over their head at the moment from the government and then they want the money. They want the city challenge money and they want the estate action money. And unless they prove that they've consulted properly, then they won't get it. So that leaves you in a very strong position to say what you want and to ask for what you want and to demand what you want, right? Because they're not going to get the money unless you are satisfied with what they produce. It's unusual, isn't it? What you're seeing, when we get it... If we get another house on the estate, we'll be able to have a lot of choice in what's done to it. Well, that's, that's what we've been doing. Yeah, particular house. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the rehab housing that people have seen in Kirby and Liverpool a fantastic, look brand new housing modelled to their own specifications, each house. And that has been done.
I mean, we've been pulled down so much, haven't we, Raymond? Oh, yeah. Really pulled down. And that's why I, it's, I'm angry. I, re I really am. I want to fight out and I want to punch somebody. Because they've done the royal keys, they're busy with the royal keys. Mm -hmm. We've never had one letter in our doors to tell us how they're progressing. They would never, they would never have bothered with this estate. Full stop. Had it not been for the royal keys, the people of this estate have said that all the time. It was the royal keys that brought it forward about getting the estate done. They're bringing the yuppies in. That's where it's all about, isn't it? I don't mind them doing it. I mean, OK, it's going to be gorgeous. I mean, it's supposed to be giant waterfalls and everything. It's not, I mean, I would like to think it was for the people of the Meadowell, but can the people of this estate afford something like that? Heard of many of the estate at the moment getting a job over there. I've heard of people going for interviews, but not actually getting a job. And I can't see why. Now. I mean, there's plenty of work over there now, so I can't understand why there's people not started on there. a deep depression, they've, they've sunk like into a hole and they can't see a light at the end of the tunnel and I think the women have, for a few years now, have had to take the leading role in the house and it's those who are, are being the push in the family now, not, you know, and it's all down to the unemployment. Men have got no money in their pockets and depressed and they see the wife having to do little bits of jobs here, there and everywhere to keep the family going. It's, it must be degrading for a man. I wouldn't like to be a man on this estate. The women, on the other hand, are, are the ones who hold the families together, who, you know, pull the kids up, who um, are the providers in a lot of ways of, of support and emotional support. And traditionally, women always bandy together to get things done. Um, I got my, I've wrote it on the six of me loan in a pound of me Because I want to renew it again for November. For the Christmas. For the wedding. Is that when the wedding is in November? Oh, well, you've got a bit more, a bit more time, haven't you? Oh, It's the credit union. <coughs> it's um, the residents themselves set it up. So are you ready to, for the wedding? Did you get your Hopefully get rid of loan sharks that we used to have on the estate. And it also encourages people to save because they need to save before they're allowed to have a loan, very low interest rate. It's one percent the interest rate. Okay. I think it could do with a bit more cool, John. Do you? Look at them bangers, lad. Eh? Last year, the women doing a good job, so why, why not let the women do a good job? I mean, they're running a credit union, they're running, um, they're running the shops down, um, down the South Meadowell, they're running the shops here, they're doing a good job. And I think they do a good job, the women, let them get on with it. If they want any help, we'll give them help, but uh, I don't think it's a man's job to sit. You don't want us sitting in that shop on, on, on the Meadowell selling, selling bread and sugar and butter and that. Do you want? No. Let the women do it. They're all right. I think they're doing a good job, the women. We've campaigned for a lot of things, you know. Uh, I think it's a, a lot has a lot to do with politics. 
We're not into that. You're only fighting for what you think is right for the people. Somebody has to do a bit talking and a bit shouting if you want to get anywhere with things for the people. The meadow has been a crutch for social workers and for professional people for long enough. And they failed, they failed miserably. And I think the reason why community care is successful is the residents decided what they wanted to do and they've gone ahead and done it, and I think very successfully. I think um, any policy that's going to work on meadow has to give control to the residents in that how that policy works out on the ground. Um, for example, I think the youth training scheme, if it's imposed on the estate, um, young people sort of see the jam tomorrow of YTS and realise it, it's a false promise in a way because they see high unemployment around them, for example. And therefore they, they you know, question the worth of a scheme that doesn't seem to lead anywhere. At the same time, though, if you allow um, actual control to rest, so residents don't feel they're being ripped off by a scheme, but they actually have ownership of that scheme. And community care, for example, the actual training budget was held by the group, and they decided what kind of training they wanted in housing self-management, and had a, a say on who they appointed to train them in that. Yeah. You can't get out, I can't get that done. No, that's, that's probably as confidence grew, so did they um, hunger for more skills and more training. That started through funding from the Development Corporation. Um, the Development Corporation we put in for funding, and it started what started as night classes developed um, that people wanted full time training. It's landscape training, um, horticulture, it's uh, paint and decorating. Any house um, on the estate can be decorated. All they have to do is provide the material. It's the same as with the gardening. We have um, the knitting, machine knitting out there, which we are hoping to turn into a community business. Some interest has been shown in night classes and we're trying to get the girls together to do an open university when we receive our funding through this year. There is a need for proper youth work and that means the stuff that um, the detached youth work project was doing and that does actually need to be replaced rapidly. At the moment the estate is getting less than half of one worker for detached work of proper youth work. There is a need for variety, Councillor Corky, in what this state gets in terms of youth provision. If I can just answer <laughs> Charles's point a little bit. Um, there is variety in the work that we're doing. Um, and we are doing quality youth work as well, and it's not just quality play work, as Charles has pointed out. Like, in the past, we've been helping people who have um, been sentenced for various things. We've been acting as emergency foster parents for various kids. We've also been doing the basic face-to-face -face work, and we've also been trying to cover the gaps that have been left by the burning down of the Conwood and the taking away of the funding for various youth workers on the estate. Um, and we're trying our best to keep a hold of all of that stuff that's going on for young people. And like sometimes I think you've really got to take stock of like what you're saying when you're saying there's decent kids and there's not decent kids. 
Because I don't agree with that at all. I think all the kids on the Meadowell are decent kids in the no. show. No. All the kids, all the kids, all the kids on the Meadowell are decent kids, right? Yeah, no. And that's the, that's, that's, that's the chance. That's the chance. That's the. Let me finish. You had your say before, right? Let me finish, right? And I get sick and tired of people that keep blaming everything on the young people as well, when there's old people that get out blagging just as much as the young people. And where do you think young people get their ideas from, eh? Young people get their ideas from the old people, so don't go blaming them all the time. It just frightened me of what the future's gonna be for the little ones coming up because they're starting to ape some of the big ones, you know? I mean, you don't see kids much now playing uh, games like rounders, hopscotch, or any of them sort of games. It's, you'll see them with something in their hand. Many youngsters watch the joyriding. Their adult role models are the, are the, are the young lads. 17 and the 18 and the 19 year old lads who are carrying out the burglaries and many of those youngsters have been copying exactly what's been happening we had ex we had reports from parents directly after the riots of last year of many youngsters in play groups mimicking the action of youngsters by throwing bottles around um, plastic bottles within within nurseries and kids um, playing in their trundle cars and saying they were, they were stolen cars. Now, that sort, it, when, when, when the culture permeates down in the play groups, then I think we've got a very, very serious problem indeed. Right, you know, you're gonna, you're, you're gonna think about what's on your windowsill, right? Oh, something that's ornaments, right? Ornaments? Oh, what you would like, and a view that you'd like out the window. I mean, what's out your window now? Is it other houses? Burnout shops. Burnout shops, do you want to draw them on there? Why? Right, we could put a picture of that. So that's you looking out onto the burnout shop. Definitely. Because it shows you, like, going after. Oh. Have you seen it, Sean? Are you coming along tomorrow, Lindy? I'm coming along. Oh, I know you are. It's your <laughs> birthday, isn't it? Uh, it's your birthday tomorrow. Uh, Two celebrations at once. I uh, left the guys a Porsche like. <laughs> Birth of 40 odd. I'm reasonably optimistic that there will still be people here on the estate in two or three years' time, hopefully in better housing, um, with a few more trees and a bit more landscaping, um, that are still trying to fight their corner and fight a cause against poverty and against the sort of conditions people have to live in in here. Um, I'm, I don't have a lot of faith in local authorities or governments. Um, I've got faith in people as individuals. Um, I think the political situation is not going to improve for people. I think I'm pessimistic about um, any major changes in society. Um, for the foreseeable future. I can't see the rich in giving up some of their power and some of their money to help the people at the bottom. I'd like to see what's going to happen in the year 2000 on this estate. Is it going to be a model estate or is it going to be back to the way it was? Hi everybody and welcome to Saturday the 11th of July. Uh -huh. 
the 40 Yard Club opening day. Uh, I hope everybody's having a good time. This is what it's all about. We've come to open the 40 Yard Club. And Nancy Peters, with a nice big pair of scissors, is now going to officially open it. Come on, Nancy. I mean this bookshop for our kids, truly. And over, it's open. And I'm doing it with pleasure because these are our kids and I'm proud of them. Well done, Nancy. Big round of applause. Yeah. Remember the picture of the everybody. Nothing will be perfect. I mean, we're not. We've got common sense. We know everything in the garden's not going to be rosy. There's going to be a lot of hard work. Thank you. 